Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope everybody's having a fabulous day. Let's go ahead and dive right into our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. I'm so excited, I hope you are too, because today we're making salt dough clay unicorns. I'm gonna show you first how to make salt dough clay. So for that, you will need a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of salt, and a half a cup of flour. If you have food coloring, that would be awesome too. If you don't, but you have paint, grab your paint, we will make that work. No paint, no problem. You can still make a unicorn that's all white. You can always add color to it later with markers. You'll also need a piece of cardboard, and I like to have a little cup of water on hand so that I can always add a little water to the clay in case it's kind of dry. If you enjoy making unicorns, then I also have a how to draw unicorn video too, right here on YouTube. So let's get down to unicorn town, shall we? Before we do, let's give a big old shout out to our sponsors, Ticonderoga and Art to Remember. Ticonderoga makes these really cool paints, papers, and pipe cleaners, otherwise known as chenille sticks, that glow under black light. I do something every year called a glow gallery for my art show. If you hop on over to Amazon, visit the Pakin Paper Store, you'll find all of Ticonderoga's glow products. So if that's something you're interested in, you might wanna check it out. And I'm gonna be very soon sharing with you how to make a whole lot of glow gallery goodness. Thanks Ticonderoga. And thank you, Art to Remember. We wanna cherish and remember all of these masterpieces that we make. The best way to do that is with Art to Remember. Take a picture of your artwork on your phone, pop it up onto their website and create your own free digital art gallery. Thank you, Art to Remember. All right, friends, Pinky's out. <clears throat> I, Pinky, promise to do my very best to finish what I start and to keep a positive attitude. Mwah! All right, let's make our clay first. So grab a bowl for mixing, maybe a spoon or a spatula for stirring stuff up. You'll need a half a cup of flour, quarter cup of water, quarter cup of salt, food coloring if you've got it. Let's go. All right, let's start by making our salt dough clay. So the first thing I'm going to do is in my bowl, I'm going to place a one quarter cup of water. I already poured one quarter cup of water into my bowl, and now I'm going to add a quarter cup of salt. So what I like to do is keep that measuring cup nice and flat on my table as I pour in my ingredients. You know I love to make salt dough clay. We've done it quite a bit. All you need is three ingredients, one quarter cup of water, one quarter cup of salt, and a half a cup of flour. There we go, that looks like that's about right. Pour that in, and next up I'm going to add my half a cup of flour. If you are gluten-free, you could always use gluten-free flour. Any kind of flour that you have should work. All right, now I'm gonna go for a half a cup of flour and then mix it all up. If you want more of this dough, then you would just double the recipe. So that would be a half a cup of water, a half a cup of salt, and a full cup of flour. Okay, this looks like a little much. I'm gonna try adding some more back into my flour. And then pour it in. Now, if I ended up with too much of one ingredient, I can always add more. So if I discover when I'm, I almost said spinning it, when I'm stirring it, if I discover it's too watery, I can add more flour. If it's too, oh, that looks pretty good. If it's too wet, I can add more flour. If it's too dry, I would add more water. Now, it's going to look a little dry. It's gonna be a little clumpy, just like this, until you use your hands to start to knead it. So now I'm gonna dig in, taking my hands and squish and squeeze, and I'm helping to really continue to mix those ingredients. Now I can tell just by kneading mine, mine's a little dry, mine's a little crumbly. 
So I have to problem solve. What's missing? What do I need to add? More water. Now I'm only going to add a little bit of water because if I add too much, then I'll be back in the same spot where I'll have something that's not too dry, but then too wet, and I'll just keep having to balance it. So let's go ahead and knead this. The thing about art making is you're always constantly problem solving, trying to figure out what's missing, what went wrong, <laughs> apparently a lot here. And I'm just gonna keep kneading this in. Okay, it's starting to feel like the ingredients are mixing better, but it still looks a little dry, so I'm gonna try adding a little bit more water. There we go. Now, I have a good amount of dough to use for my unicorn, but I want some of this dough to have some color to it so that I can add the rainbow to the unicorn's mane. So to do that, I'm going to use some food coloring on just some of this dough. So I'm gonna be taking my dough, and now that I've got it kneaded, yes, that feels a lot better. See how now it's not too dry. I could probably add a little bit more water, but the food coloring will add some water to this. Now that I've got a nice ball of salt dough clay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and get my food coloring ready. I'm gonna take my clay and divide it in half. One half I will be using for my unicorn, and then the other half will be for the other parts of my unicorn. So I think I'll use this slightly bigger piece for my unicorn. These will be the colorful parts. I need three colors. I want to have the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So I'm gonna take this and divide it into three pieces. One, two, and three. Now I'm going to dye these. I'm gonna start with blue. I'm gonna roll this into a ball, squish it flat into a slab, and just add a couple of drops of food coloring. Food coloring might stay in your hands, so only use a couple of drops. You could wear gloves if you wanted to. You could put this inside of a bag and squish the bag to mix the clay, or you could just be really careful and know that your hands might end up a little bit what I call rainbowy. You're gonna have rainbow lotion. There it is, it's coming through. Ooh, got on my finger and that's gonna stain for a little bit. Now I'm just gonna mix these colors up. I mix it by rolling it in my hands, <laughs> which are now really stained, and just kind of rolling it around until all of the colors are nice and mixed. If it looks too light, I can always add more of the food coloring, but to really blend it, I'm rolling it into a coil and then rolling it into a ball. Now I'm gonna go rinse off my hands, do the same thing with red and with yellow. All right, to make our unicorn, why don't we first just draw a general shape of where we want our unicorn head to go. So if you just take your hand and kind of lay it across your board diagonally, this would be a really good shape for your um, unicorn's neck. And then from there, two lines that would come out that would make the face. So if you want to, you could lay your arm here gently you don't have to press it down, you don't have to spread your fingers out, just relax your arm. You could trace it now, or you could have a friend or family member do it. If you don't wanna trace your arm, then you could just draw a couple of lines, one starting here, one here, coming up, over like a rainbow that's tall and fell over, and down. Me, I'm gonna try it with one hand. It's just me here, so I'm gonna try tracing it, but I'm not really close to my arm. And I'm just gonna kind of keep my fingers together, going over, around, scoot in hand, and down. That looks like a pretty good shape. Now what I need to do is make a shape that comes down. So I'm gonna make a shape like this that comes down right there. There we go. Now it looks a little bit like a sock puppet or a duck. Now that I have this sketched out, I can add a couple of more things. Thinking about where I want the parts of the unicorn to go. I know I want a horn here, so I'm gonna draw a little triangle shape. I know I want the head to come in a little bit. 
and then come out a little bit. I'm just getting more details in there. And I also know I need my unicorn horn. So using kind of a tall letter A, just going to stretch up and then come back down. Okay, this is gonna be the general shape for my unicorn. If you wanna draw yours in any sort of different way, go for it. Now let's start with our white clay. I need to make this piece of clay be flattened into this kind of shape. I hope I have enough clay. That means we're really gonna have to squish it flat. Let's start with the face of the unicorn. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a piece of clay I just pinched off a little bit rolling it into a sphere. And now I know that I want it here, so I'm gonna place it here and then just squish. Squishing it, and as I squish it, I'm just gently spreading the clay out. Now, if your clay is starting to crack, if you've worked with this kind of clay before, you know that when it cracks a little bit, it's telling you it wants some water. So I always have a little tiny dish of water on hand, so that way if my clay gets thirsty, I just put a little bit of water on my finger, just kind of massage it or rub it into the clay, and that makes it so it's not cracking so much. If it's still cracking, peel the clay off, roll it back into a ball, and add a little drops of water with your fingers and mix that up. It will make it nice and smooth again. All right, so I think the muzzle of my unicorn is done. Now let's work on this part of the head. I'm going to do it in the same kind of way. I'm gonna pinch off a piece, maybe a little bigger, roll it into a sphere, and now I'll place it here, kind of like it looks like the eye, and squish it into place. Now I have to really squish and spread, squish and spread that clay out. That way I know I have enough, so I'm just kind of squishing it over to here. If it's sticking more to you than it is to your board, try putting a little bit of water, just with your finger, try putting a little bit of water on your board. Okay, now I'm just gonna try to smoosh those two pieces together. That's looking pretty good. It didn't quite make it as big as my outline, and that's okay. Now I'm going to take a little shape, a smaller piece of clay, and roll it into a sphere. My clay's cracking, so I'm gonna add a little water. Roll it into a sphere. Massage that water in there. And now let's see if I can pinch it, pinch it, and put it here. I shaped it a little bit into a triangle just by pinching the top of that sphere. And now I'm just gonna spread it out kind of spreading it into that shape that I drew. Oh, it's cracking, no problem, I know what to do. I'm a problem solver. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, all right. And if they get water on your board, it's okay too, because you could always let the board dry and it will be fine. Now I have to make the neck. I have a pretty good amount of clay, Let's see how I can make this work. I'm gonna roll a sphere, it's dry, add a little water to it, massage it in. Now I'm gonna roll this into a sphere and then roll it into a coil. I'll probably need a couple of coils, but let's just start with one and see how we do. I'm just gonna start by pressing this into the board, pressing it and squishing it, having it come up to that circle and then go back down. If it won't reach the edge of the board, that's okay. We can always kind of disguise that with some extra clay where we can make flowers or maybe some hearts down here. So I'm just spreading this out. Oh, 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 I just barely made enough clay, but that neck is too skinny. Good thing I have this extra bit. Add a little bit of water to it and coil. This coil I'm just gonna set right here We'll see if I have enough clay, and if not, no problem. I'll use all my extra clay to add more decorations. Roll this coil a little longer, have it meet right there, and then go down to here. And I'm gonna take my finger, get it a little wet, and just kind of massage those two pieces together so that they're a little bit more blended. All right, so that's as far as I could get. I'm gonna put that piece right there, no big deal because now with my extra clay, I could add some things down here. 
Okay, now I'm ready to get out some of my colorful clay and really start to decorate my unicorn. All right, now that I have this shape finished, next up I'm going to start working on the parts of the face. I'm gonna be using blue clay for that, but you could use any color you want to. I'm just gonna pinch off a little bit and my clay's a little dry, so I've got my cup of water on hand to kind of massage or work that water into my clay. Now I'm gonna roll it into a ball and then I'm going to roll it into a little coil. Again, if it starts to crack, it's just telling you it's thirsty. My clay is just a little bit dry. There we go. Now I've got a little coil and I can bend that into the shape of a little winking or closed eye. Perfect. Now that that's finished, I'm gonna go ahead and do those same kind of curves for the other parts of the face. Grab another little piece of clay. Maybe this one's a little bit smaller because it's gonna be for the nostril. Notice I only drew, made, I almost said drew, I'm not drawing. Notice I only made one eye and I'm only going to make one nostril. The reason is, is because this is a profile or a side view of my unicorn. You only see one winky eye and one nostril. The other one is on the other side. Right, I'm gonna pinch a little bit bigger and add a little clay. By the way, you might've noticed that my board, I painted my board before I started. If you have paint, that's something you could do. Or if you don't have paint, you could use your crayons to color your board too. I could stop and do that now, but you know, I think I'm just gonna go with this kind of color and keep on sculpting. There's the little mouth, perfect. If things are sticking more to your fingers than they are to the clay, try adding a little bit of water to your clay. If I'm going too fast, just hit the pause button. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little piece of clay and make the triangle shape for the ear. When you're sculpting things, like we're about to do hearts, sometimes sculpting shapes can be tricky. So you could just roll it into a sphere, squish it into a slab, and then shape it the way you want to. So I have a slab, I'm gonna pinch one side to make it pointed, flatten the other, and then squish it into a slab. The wonderful thing about clay is if you sculpt it and it doesn't quite look right or not what you were going for, you can roll it back up and try it again. All right, now let's work on the unicorn horn. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick. You could just take one color like yellow, roll a coil and press it in place. Or you could take two colors. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, add a little water so it's nice and soft. And I think I'm gonna go with a little bit of red. And I'm gonna do a little trick for my unicorn horn. But first I've gotta make sure my clay is nice and soft. It's a little dry. Problem solving over here. All right, I'm gonna start by rolling a coil. If it's hard to do it with your hands, Put a piece of paper down on your table. You won't want to roll this right on your table because it'll stick. And then take your other one, roll a sphere and a coil up and down your hands. And now I'm gonna take the two and twist them together just like this. Now you don't have to do this. You could just stick with something simple like one color, but I like this because it actually kind of has the cool texture of a unicorn horn. All right, unicorn, come on back. There you are. And now let's see. Okay, it's a little long. I'm just gonna gently push it into place. Oh, sweet. Oh, that looks awesome. Oh, it's a little big, so I'm just gonna fold it over there. And that'll also help it make it look a little bit wider. There we go. I'm trying to squish it so it kind of hides my crayon lines. Yay. Now that that's finished, I can start to work on the hair for my unicorn. Any other details that you wanna add, if you wanted to add eyelashes or different colors or even a cute little cheek would be great right there, do it. Hit that pause button and come up with something amazing. I'm gonna take a little piece of red about the size of a peanut M&M. I'm gonna roll it into a sphere and now roll it into a coil. And now I'm gonna shape this into the hair. 
You could, if it's not sticking to your board, take your finger and draw where you want that clay to go. It'll help your clay stick. And the cool thing is, is if you change your mind, it'll just disappear as the water dries. You could have your hair go up like that. You could also have it come down across the neck. You could do a little bit of both, it's up to you. I'm gonna have mine come back this way because I have a lot of extra room right back here on my cardboard. All right, now that that's finished, I wanna make orange. Here's how you make orange. Look at my rainbow, red plus yellow, make orange. Well, that's easy if ever you're trying to figure out how do I make the secondary colors? These are the primary colors, red, yellow, blue. The secondary colors are the ones that you make with these primary colors. If you're ever trying to figure out how to make them, look at a rainbow. If you wanna make orange, find the two primary colors that it's in between, red and yellow. And I'm gonna mix them by twisting and then squishing it all up. That's different than how I did that unicorn horn, isn't it? Because now what I'm doing is blending those colors in, mixing it all up, getting them all nice and blended. There we go, yay. All right, I'm gonna roll it into a coil and think about where I want this one to be going. Maybe it could overlap that a little bit. That would be pretty. So you could always drape it on there first to decide your composition, your placement and size of things before pressing it into your board. Now my next one is just yellow. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of yellow and keep on going. I'm just gonna continue on. So if you know how to make these other colors from going too slow, you could always zip on ahead of me. If I'm going too fast, you know to hit the pause button. Oh, let's see, where could this one go? Maybe around, oh yeah, maybe around this way. That'll be beautiful. Now I could do my green. Stop and look at my rainbow. See if you can figure out how do you make green. Hmm, find the two primary colors that green is in between. Yellow and blue. You got it, yellow and blue make green. Now, if you're mixing your colors, let's say you're making green and you use yellow and blue and the green looks a little bit too much blue, stop and problem solve. What could you do to fix it? Add more yellow. And if it looks too yellow, add more blue. You got it, see? Art is amazing because if you hit a little speed bump in your art making road, if you just stop and think, hmm, what's the problem? How can I solve it? You could always come up with a solution. I'm sure of it. All right, now that I've got my green, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And I'm starting to run out of room. Notice how I drew that out first. Let's see, starting to run out of a little bit of space. So maybe I could do something called overlapping, meaning I had that little green piece go over the yellow just a little bit. It went over it, it overlapped it. Woo, cool. You know, I wonder what would happen if you added, when you're making your clay next time, or if you do another one of these, what if you added a teeny tiny bit of very, very fine glitter? Would that not give your unicorn a little bit of a beautiful shine? Something to think about. All right, I'm adding my blue. Then I'm gonna show you how to make some flowers with your extra clay. I'm gonna use flowers and hearts down here. Now you could put your flowers and hearts anywhere you want to, but the reason I'm adding mine down here is because I have this big open space that I want to fill in. I'm gonna make some purple by using a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. Mix them together and that should make some purple. We're gonna end up using, oof, dry stuff. We're gonna end up using just about all of your clay today. Oh my, good thing, cause this clay is starting to dry out. If you ever have extra clay that you wanna use, again, all you have to do is wrap it in some plastic, like saran wrap, put it in the refrigerator, 
You might want to write on there that it's salt though clay so nobody takes a big old bite. That would be the only bite they took of it because so much salt it would taste disgusting. But you could then keep it in your fridge to sculpt with it later on. When you're finished with your unicorn, all you have to do is just let it sit out to dry. You don't have to bake it, it's on cardboard, so that wouldn't be a great idea. If you put it outside on a warm, sunny day, it'll probably be dry in no time. Mine's been drying for a couple of days in my house and it's good to go. Okay, now that I'm all finished with this, I'm going to show you how to make some hearts. Ooh, I should probably wash my hands at some point. So a heart, you could do it a lot of different ways, but the easiest way is to just pinch the bottom, pinch the top back and forth to make a teardrop shape. Put your finger right there to squish it down, and then you can add it. And when you add it, you can always change the shape. I'm stretching mine out a little bit to make a nice big heart to kind of hide the bottom right here. You can make other hearts if you want to make a flower. You just roll your clay into a coil. Oops, I added too much water. Roll it into a coil. And then just kind of twirl it into a spiral around your fingers and now you've got a flower shape. You could even do a pattern. I think I squished it too much. I'm just gonna change it now into a heart. I think I'll do a pattern of um, primary color hearts. But the cool thing is you could do whatever you wanted to. You could even shape the clay into coils and write M-O-M -M for somebody special for Mother's Day or anybody else. Now that I'm almost finished, I'm gonna use my crayons, I think, once this dries, to so just kind of color in the background. You could do that, but you don't have to. Whatever you decide to do, I'm sure it will look amazing. As long as you had fun, that is all that matters. Maybe I'll just take my crayons and just do some fun little spirals in the background. Guys, let this dry and then show it off to friends and fam. If you had so much fun making your salt dough clay unicorn, then don't forget to give this video a great big old thumbs up. If you subscribe, then you'll be able to stay up to date with all the videos. If you just can't get enough of unicorns, I have a how to draw unicorn video right here. If you can't get enough of making things out of salt oak clay, then boy, oh boy, have I got you covered. There's how to make a solar system, how to make a dinosaur, so how to make planet Earth. So many projects for you involving salt oak clay. Thank you so much for creating with me today. Have fun, guys.